Um, so in this lecture, we want to continue from where we left off for um, multiplication division of complex numbers in polar form. Okay. Uh, we showed in the previous lecture that if you have uh, two complex numbers in polar form, z1 and z2, if you multiply them, um, the modulus of the product is the product of the modulus. All right? And then the quotient, sorry, the, uh, the argument is the sum of the argument of the two complex numbers. And if you divide the two complex numbers, then the modulus, resulting modulus, is the modulus of the first one divided by the second. And the argument is the difference of the two um, arguments. All right? So this is, this is powerful. Now, this has some uh, very interesting numerical interpretations. What he's saying is that, let's assume that um, uh, you have complex number uh, Z1 and you can, let's, let's suppose you can write it as this. Okay, assume that the, um, the angle beta 1 is here. So let's say this is our Z1, okay, with an angle of theta 1. Okay, this is, let me write it, uh, let me write it here. So this is Z1, angle theta 1, okay? And then, uh, of course, the modulus is the distance. And then let's take another one. Let's call that, uh, let me call this Z2. Z2 makes an angle of theta 2, right? Theta 2. And theta 1 is less than theta 2. Suppose they are all positive angles. What this is saying is this. If I multiply these two, Right here, yeah, more or less like vectors, right? Yeah, the vector here. If I multiply them, the resulting vector is going to have a modulus, a distance that is a product of the two. So suppose this is uh, three and that is two. If you multiply them six, so the resultant um, complex number is going to have an argument which is the sum of the two, theta one plus theta two. So it's going to be less than it's going to be somewhere here. Right? It's a sum. And then, okay, this is going to be set, and that will be the product Z1 and Z2. So that's what this is saying. I have two complex numbers, Z1 with an angle of theta 1, Z2 with an angle of theta 2. If I multiply the two, I'm going to have a resulting complex number with an argument that is the product of these two um, modulus, or moduli. And then it makes an angle which is the sum of the two angles for Z1 and Z2. So that is some interpretation of, um, of this. Okay? And then if you divide them, so if you divide the two complex numbers, so now let's, let's, let's do this. So this is for Z1 and Z2. If, um, if you are dividing them, so let's do the same thing here. Let's assume that we have a Z1, which is this guy. We have a Z2. Yes. Right? Theta 1. All of this is theta 2. Okay. Let's say that if I divide them, the resulting um, modulus will be R1 divided by R2. So if R1 was uh, now let's 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 use the same thing, right? This is 2, this is 3. Uh, so I'm going to have 2 divided by 3, okay? Uh, so it's going to be the modulus, the um, distance is going to be shorter than both of this in this case, right? It's going to be zero, R1 over R2. But, and the angle is going to be the difference. So suppose both are positive. Then theta 1 minus theta 2 is going to be a negative angle. So the resultant complex number is going to be somewhere here, right? This guy, let's assume. The angle here is theta 1 minus theta 2 because it's negative, right? But the distance actually is going to be a shorter distance. The distance from here to here is going to be 2 over 3, and the angle is, is going to be that. So when you are dividing, then you're sort of, you are, you are flipping, you are rotating, uh, at the same time, you are scaling the modulus of the resulting uh, complex uh, number. So that is kind of geometrically how you think about multiplication of complex, complex numbers. 
All right. Now, so let's apply this idea to do some uh, examples. So suppose that I give you two complex numbers in polar form. Okay. So example, let the complex number uh, Z1 be equal to um, this number. Let's take uh, 6 into cosine of uh, pi on 12, pi sine of pi over 12. Let Z2 be equal to, let's call this 2 into cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i plus yes, sine of 2 pi over 3. I have two complex numbers, so this is, if you like, this is uh, example 1. Okay, two complex numbers, they are here. So, what we have just learned says that i, if I just, if I want to find z1 and z2, if I want to find the product of these complex numbers, because they are in polar form, all I do is the modulus will be this times that. That's 12, right? And then I'm going to have the cosine will be the sum of these two angles, pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 3. Pi sine of pi over 12 plus, okay, plus 2 pi over 3, okay? And that's be equal to 12 into cosine of SC 4 4 that's 8 that's 9 so this is 9 pi over 12 3 goes into this 3 3 goes into this 4 all right just simplify it and then sine of the same thing 3 pi over 12. so instead of multiplying and expanding and using trade just apply what we learned right that concept uh, so which implies the product of the two complex numbers will be given by this complex number. Okay? If you divide them, and of course, this is what you're going to get. If I divide the two complex numbers, z1, z2, then I'm going to get, I'm going to take this divided by that, right? I'm going to have 6 divided by 2. And then I'm going to have a cosine of. Now the argument of the result will be the difference. Will be this minus that. The pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 3. I sine of pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 3. Okay? So this is equal to this goes in here 3, right? And then I'm going to have cosine of then. 12, so multiply by 4, by 4, that is 8, so this is negative 7 pi over 12, minus 7 pi over 12, okay? This is going to be the same thing, minus 7 pi over 12, all right? Of course, then you can simplify this. Again, cosine of negative x is cos x, so the negative just goes, and I have 7 pi over 12, and I can pull for sine, I can pull the negative out, and this minus i sine of 7 pi over 4. I can pull the bracket here. Okay? So z1 over z2 is just equal to that. Alright? So that is how you apply um, the concept of multiplying um, and dividing complex numbers. Uh, let's do a second example which is a little bit trickier. So I'm going to say example two here. Um, okay, so I'm going to get rid of this. Let's get rid of this and that. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Okay, good. So, now, Great. So, so let's change this to um, let's let's do. I have um, an example here. I'm going to put three here. Okay, then we get rid of all this. Call z two. This time z two is going to be three. Cosine of. I'm going to have uh, five, five, 
5 pi over 12 minus i sine of 5 pi over 12. Okay? So v2 is now equal to this. Great. So how do we get that? Same thing, we are going to multiply, so multiply this and that. 6 times this is 18. So 18. I'm going to have cosine. Since it's a product, I'm going to sum the elements. I'm going to have pi over 12 plus 5 pi over 12 minus r, ah, not minus. Okay, so note this is important. So let's let's do this. Here, because this is important. Because there's a minus here, know that whatever we did here was a class. We had classes here. So rewrite Z2 so that you have a class here. Okay? And then you can apply apply this concept. So know that we can rewrite Z2 to be equal to 3 into cosine of 5 pi over 12 is the same as cosine of negative 5 pi over 12 because it's cosine. And we can take this negative in here so that we get a plus here. Sine of negative 5 pi over 12. This is the same as that. But when you write it this way, okay, then you can directly apply the, uh, the concept that uh, we just learned. That is why it's important to do it this way. Now that we have it this way, then the product Z1 and Z2 just be equal to, of course, this times that, 18 once again. I'm going to have cosine. So now I can just add them, this and that. So I'm going to have pi over 12. This is negative, so minus 5 pi over 12. I sine, I'm going to have the same thing here, pi over 12 minus 5 pi over 12. All right? Uh, then, which implies that z1 and z times z2 is equal to about, I still have an 18. Now, let's see. This and this is negative 4 pi. So it cancels out, and I'm going to have cosine of negative pi over 3, right? It's a negative 4 pi which cancels this. So you get a 3. And then plus i, sine, you should get the same thing here, negative pi over 3, okay? And now you can, you can simplify it as before. It's negative, it becomes the same thing because it's pi. It's cosine, and you can bring the negative i now, and you have sine of i. Okay? So, when you have a negative here, that is how you do it. You have to be careful about that. And then we can, of course, finish up with um, z1 over z2 now. Will be, I'm going to take this z1 is here, 6, divided by this guy, which is 3. Uh, and I'm going to have cosine of, because I'm the I'm dividing, I have to subtract, I'm going to take this, right? The argument pi over 12 minus this. So minus minus becomes plus. So we're going to have pi over 12 plus 5 pi over 12. Okay? And then of course the sine pi is going to be the same too. Alright? So this is equal to this goes in here too. We have cosine of, if I add this, this is 6 pi over 12. So these guys have to pi over 2. I, we should give it the same to pi over 2. So, and that is z1 over z2. Alright? So, um, these are just two examples of how, how you uh, how you divide and multiply complex numbers. If you have any other problem, you can often just break it down into these two, and then you have to have your uh, solution. All right. So I'll see you uh, in the next uh, lecture where we talk. We talk uh, more about you know complex numbers, of course. All right. See you.